Oh, I see one. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. Yes, that's the first one I put in that was not on camera. That's a Mitsuba that actually won awards when I showed him. Yes. I hadn't seen I hadn't seen him since I put him in. Dean said he thought he saw him, but I'm really, really happy to see that. Look at him, he's like moving around quick. He's loving life. He's going, I can do laps in this thing. God, I got buddies now. Thanks, Corey, thanks. Look I don't know him. if it's coming up on camera. I can't see, it's too bright. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> So it's the big day. I'm moving my koi. I've moved some in. We've seen signs of life. It's a huge pond, you know, from 5,000 gallons to, I don't know, 500,000? I have no idea. Constant flow through system, but I have to move. It's been eight months, so it's about time I move. And uh, part of that is moving the koi. So when I was catching them out, they were much bigger than I thought. So I'm gonna have to make multiple trips. So on the first trip, this is what I've caught so far. This black and white is I, they're my favorite type or one of my favorite types, Shiro Utsuri. They kind of look like cows. The black, as they get bigger, will get more and more and more intense, especially on their face. You can see it coming up through their, their nose right there. Oh yeah. So all that'll come through black and a lot of scales will come through black. This is a doitsu, so it just means the sca scaleless. So on the side of it, there's barely any scales, just on the top and the lateral line. And this is a platinum version, which they show up really well in a pond. So that's those two, which they're not very big or anything like that, but. All right, so I'm pretty ignorant with koi and goldfish. Yeah. But I've heard that goldfish lose the black as they get older. Is that different with koi? Yeah. Goldfish, typically, they all start as black. And then as they get bigger, they turn into white, gold, yellow, those types of colors, and they can remain spotted. And you can get black moors that stay black forever. You can get black ranchus, but you actually have to breed for that. Where these, these are all line bred to make different colors. So like the Shiro Itsuri, to be black and white, it's done that way for many, many generations. These are actually from Denichi. So if you know that line of fish food, so Denichi Koi Farm, oh, yeah. they also make African cichlid food and stuff, but they, primarily play in the koi world. And that's where these ones, these Shiro Itsuri, they're known for making Shiro Itsuri koi, so the black and white koi. I got them when they were young. They were like, at this size, like $80 a piece, which is still expensive, but it's not the most expensive koi I've bought. <laughs> uh, and it's really hard to get them because people do love them. Like, just in general, families like, I want the cowfish, you know? And a lot of the ones are like, ah, mm. only a mother could love that ugly thing, you know? So I've got some of those fish too. <laughs> uh, so in here, these are kind of the mutts that people might not like. So this I got because it was quite rare for me. This is doitsu, so the scales again, right? It's mostly skin you can see, and then the scales top and side, but it's also, they'll call it butterfly fin or dragon fin. It's just a long fin variety. All right, so microphones died. Bear with us. We're, we're going at it because uh, the fish can't wait to charge up the microphone. So talking about the high fin banded shark, that's this guy. I've, I've actually never seen them this big in person. I've seen pictures and they get three feet. So this guy is not huge by any means. They're an algae eater for your pond. And you can see they've got that kind of sucker fish mouth on them. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's kind of shark-like when they're small. They look much like sharks. Like maybe Bob will put a picture like that in, but they keep, this fin doesn't get any bigger. So it's like when they're three feet, they still have this little stubby fin and they look <laughs> kind of ridiculous. I love, and they lose their stripes too. They kind of just become this brown mottled color. And, uh, but they're really good algae eaters and they can overwinter in Washington. And so my pond would freeze over, get a few inches thick of ice and that kind of stuff. I have no idea if it's gonna handle Michigan and all these other crazy places where it gets super cold. I was gonna point out there is an amazing amount of bugs that happen in this pond. So that's one of the reasons why we wanna get fish in there. I thought about selling these koi, leaving them for the next homeowner. If it's, you know, I might be selling it to a friend or something, but we need some bug control. So there's, it gets crazy in the middle of summer. So I'm hoping these guys are gonna cut down on that, um, which is good food for them. But these guys are the, you know, a little bit bigger ones where I was like, oh, I need to start not putting more than two and I got more fish to catch. So in here, what we kind of have is this is a Kohaku, so just red and white, and uh, very, very popular. I would say it's the most popular variety of koi out there. And then this is kind of my version of a scaleless one, so the doitsu, 
and it was much more red when I bought it, but then it got, it turned more into orange. And that's very common depending on quality of food, depending on just lineage. Doitsu are not sought after like uh, all these other patterns are. Where, so to me, you can see all the scales on a fish and a very high quality one, you would see there's a, like, there'd be clear lines and, and this one's got kind of like four steps on one side and only three steps on another. So koi nerds would be like, that thing's a mud, get that garbage out of here. But it's showing you that it'll be a big fish because this right here is kind of considered the shoulder, if you will, and it's getting big. I'm about to breathe in that bug. Uh, yeah, bugs everywhere, like I said. Uh, but this shoulder area starts showing you this could be a pretty massive fish. Now, these fish will never get as big as someone who was doing this professionally could. And I've grown some fish pretty fast, but I whether this fish reaches 24 to 30 inches, that's fine with me versus like, oh man, it's pushing 39 inches. Like, sure, they're both going to be huge. Um, but I, I really like the Doitsu just because it looks more like a tattoo and the color I find to be a little more just like defined and it, it looks, you, know, you can see the like the bubbles and the lines and not so much the scales. So most of, well, a lot of mine are Doitsu. I'm always on the lookout. They're not popular. So I have to kind of, you know, go garage selling for them and dig through thousands of koi and be like, I'll take this one. I'll take that one. Cause some of them don't look good. These are just some of the cooler ones. And I've, I've brought, there's one other Doitsu in there that we didn't get on film, but I'll catch some more. Hopefully I should have some more coming too. So Time to release these guys, yeah, and let's do it. they're gonna go down deep, and we'll see them hopefully in a week Never. or two when they, you know, when they are, uh, you know, comfortable. But there's lots of native, like natural plants. I don't know what they are, but there's all kinds of different vegetations in there. There's like this, like lotus type plant. There's this almost looks like baby tears down here. You know, you start looking, in, and during the summer it's not here, but right through here, and you can see it's purling. So it's getting the sunlight in. It's purling. And then you've got like, I don't know if that's just normal grass, and I don't know what type of other aquatic plant is next to that. So part of it is I want the koi to go in here and just munch everything up. Like I don't want to lose all the plants, but there's so much mulm and, and frog eggs and, and all the, you know, these bugs. And so I think they're having a great time in here. So I kind of just release them in here, nice and slow. The green water, oh no. If they get really big, you have to support koi with, with a sock net, but luckily mine aren't big enough to need that. So you can see all that just muck just from that little bit of water pouring. And so my hope is that once I get some aeration in the pond and they start eating, they'll kick it up and it'll leave kind of the overflow and out into the back, you know, acres of land and just settle out there. Well, plus when I was in the pond, I was sinking like a foot down. Yeah, there's a so. lot. There's there's definitely like a layer of muck. I, I don't think a thing. I don't think this pond's ever been serviced in the 30 or 40 years. It's a man-made pond. So, but I can get used to seeing that. Like if you watch the koi swim over the plants and all that, and uh, once we rebuild like our little gazebo dock thing, so you don't fall through and die, it could be really nice to hang out here. So, I'll grab the next one. The thing you have to worry about is taking too long because right now we're in the sun. Oh, I just undid that. We're in the sun and water heats up. They lose oxygen and those are all, you don't want to put them in distress before they even go in. So here goes these three buddies. I'll probably never see this shark again unless he likes to sunbathe or something. I'll probably never see him in there because it's the first time I've seen him since I put him in my big pond. Well, what was my big pond, I guess. You can't call it your big pond anymore. Yeah. There he goes. Oh, this so this is probably a red. female. She's real fat. She's probably ready to breed, actually. A lot of eggs. Yeah, the, the shark's gone, and then the koi's following him. But now that we've got more numbers, they should be more uh, friendly and try and come up, and hopefully we'll start eating from, you know, us throwing some food in, and, you know, the water won't be cloudy, but... I love the nature sounds. That's the thing is like, yeah. like all the birds and all that going. <laughs> Hopefully the platinum one will show up really well in the future. So I guess the, like, the good thing is that you're gonna be able to see these guys from a long ways away, but so are predators. Yeah, that's, you know, that's the one, that's why we tested a few fish in here to see if they just instantly got taken out by like a bald eagle 
but there's a lot of weeds, you know, a lot of uh, floating dots. cattails, or yeah, those floating tree <laughs> dock things that are there. But I, I think they'll get used to it, and we can build some protection areas, but I, I already know there's so many things for them to go hide under. It's gonna be, it's gonna be up to them, basically. Yeah, I mean, this is huge, and it goes over my head when it's full, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's deep. I, I, I can't even begin to calculate how many gallons it could or couldn't be. I like the fact that I can see that Shiro all the way from over here. That's, yeah, I don't think, I don't know if we can, but. I'll be excited. Load number two. That's right. It wasn't so hard to catch, water was a little bit lower, but uh, it was more than I thought. And I'm still draining it because there could be another hyphen banner shark or two. So in here we have, technically this would be a Showa, even though it's only got a tiny bit of orange on it. You see that in the aquarium trade now, like there's Showa sword tails and all that kind of stuff. This is another Doitsu, where it's only got the scales on the back and the side. And you can see how big the scales, one came off in the net. So I can get it here. These are how big the scales are on these guys, so. Wow. You know, big big koi scales can get like that big when they're really big. These guys, you know, they were they were kind of some of my first koi. So the pattern, still cool, and they're gonna live with me for a long time, but this guy's a little stressed. You can see more of the like the red veins in his scales. That's usually a stress sign in the white. Not always, but he I, I just know he wasn't like that when I put him in here. So moving fish is stressful, we all kind of know that. Over here, what do we got? <clears throat> So these are all doitsu. So these all don't have the big, or don't have small scales. They've only got those rows of scales. It's a lot of yeah. So these guys have all been bought at different times and for different reasons. Like this one was supposed to be just red and white, but then he developed all this black later. So he looked really cool. Now he still looks cool, but not the way I, I bought him. This guy was supposed to be Kohaku, so red and white, just like this guy was. And he was a tancho, so he's got that red dot. I thought that was super cool. And then the black came in and kind of didn't ruin it, just changed it. So it's much different than when I bought. This is a Showa. That uh, looks cool. Right, so this has got the, it's, a, it's the Doitsu, and it's got very minimal scale. You see how there's almost none on the top, none on the side? There's one right down the bottom. So they're not as popular as I like, but I would totally, if I was breeding koi, I would keep trying to make this more and more because I think it looks like tattoos on the skin is what I think. I, I just really like this. So that was a, a small fish. I think I paid 75 bucks about that size two years ago. So he should be a lot bigger, but being that I didn't have time, he should grow like a weed this year though. So that's good to, good to know. All right, let me move over. Yeah, so in here we have another butterfly. This guy was kind of a cool color pattern, kind of this goldy black color. This is a, a traditional. Like long yeah, long fin. This is a long fin here. This is a traditional Showa. Well, not traditional because this pattern's a little different, but you can see the black is really nice. And, uh, you know, I like the, the color on the back, but all the scales on the side and the, in the yeah, I wish it was Doitsu. And then this, I think they call this a Benigoy. This was one of the rarest fish. So I went to uh, Koi.com's auctions and uh, this, I ended up paying like 150 bucks for this fish and I was bidding against a lot of people. I just thought it was the coolest looking fish because it's all metallic scale, but then also the Doitsu. And I'm I'm just a Doitsu nerd. So people are buying Koi for you know $5,000 and all of that. And I'm like, yeah, they're cool, but I like the Doitsu and no one else really likes that. So it's convenient for me. But you can see the scales, it really shows off like if you see it in the sun. So, and it's just, uh, even the uh, Zach, the owner there was like, I've never seen a fish like this. And I was like, I have to own it. And so, even though it was only a little guy, it was like 150 bucks. And normally I try to, when I go to those, I go to like one a year. I try to always bring home one fish and then quarantine it and just, uh, you know, it's something to play with. It's, you know, I've got a buddy that goes with me, Jess, and uh, you know, we don't have big budgets for koi like other people where it's, you know, they might spend, they might win a bunch of awards and spend a crazy amount of money, but then what you don't know at those shows is like, that guy just spent 30 grand and then he won a bunch of awards. Like, yeah, but he left being like plus 50 grand because other people were buying his fish now they won awards and that kind of stuff. So I'm definitely not in that league. Um, 
But yeah, we'll get these guys in, and uh, I know there's a, a certain name for this type of show where the black is like, it's like a Beku type koi, but I'm not I'm not nerdy enough in the koi world to really know the the subtleties between them. I just I just like to look at them and keep them. So, all right, let's go ahead and start moving them in. Oh, I see one. Oh, do you? Oh yeah. Yes, that's the first one I put in that was not on camera. That's a Mitsuba that actually won awards when I showed him. Yes. I hadn't seen I hadn't seen him since I put him in. Dean said he thought he saw him, but I'm really, really happy to see that. Look at him, he's like moving around quick. He's loving life. He's going, I can do laps in this thing. God, I got buddies now. Thanks, Corey, thanks. Look I don't know him. if it's coming up on camera. I can't see it. it's too bright. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm, I'm super glad because I was <laughs> I was honestly like I wasn't feeling this for my channel I'm like what if this like what if they just don't make it and I'm just gonna look like the worst person ever now I feel like great because he's just hanging out in the weeds over there and that that makes put me puts me at rest quite a bit because I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do with these like you know they're worth money but I don't care about that I want them to have a good home and now they can eat bugs all the time I can step in the mud and get my shoes wet so now they can school around, not that they're schooling fish, but all right guys, go on. But yeah, I think once we get a, a big auto feeder going and you start catching like that guy in the sunlight, it's it's like a I don't know, like it's like metal that reflects back at you. I I've, I've brought him to shows too and people are like, wow I've never seen one like that. It doesn't win any awards or anything because Doitsu, like my favorite kind, just gets shoved into other. <laughs> there's like all this stuff and they're like oh yeah there's that other category that doesn't fit uh, and they always choose what people like look at him he's just, he's just racing around that's kind of the coolest thing I've seen because I never get to see koi like even at koi.com they're like a tenth or a twentieth of this size so you don't get to see them race back and forth like it's not 100 yards, it's probably like 50 no, yards, yeah, 20 yards, I don't know. 50, 60 yards. Yeah, you don't get to see that. I am I cannot wait to set up chairs and stuff down here now. Once I get that rebuilt, throw food off and watch them hang out. Man. Now I wish I would have filmed it because now I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now these guys, these usually, like if someone was a breeder and stuff, they would just sell these off and... You know, you have to get fish probably 18 inches, two feet before you really know what their color is going to be like. You can buy from the parents, and that's kind of what I do, but it never, it never means that's how they're going to grow up. So that's why koi, like, a lot of times people are like, "Why can I buy a koi for ten dollars at my my store?" But then there's koi that go for hundreds of thousands. Like, well, this koi that's this big, it might be that color right now but it might be like oh yeah it's a completely different pattern and color when it grows up and it's not nearly as cool or it's 10 times as cool so you're paying for someone else's growing time i will say now that seeing these in a gigantic pond i do like them a lot more yeah because i've only seen these in like small little tanks and i'm like why would you want to do that well and and the thing is you'll fall in love whenever you get to interact with koi they're literally encroaching on like three feet and they're just like basketball size around you're just like oh my gosh that's stupid it's the difference between like a pea puffer and like ladybird or murphy like it's just got a whole different class once they get big and you're like i could ride that thing so let's get these guys in did you go out yeah okay good Yeah, somehow I'm attracted to all the the outcasts. I mean, that seems my way in life of like, no one else likes these, I love them. And I didn't even know at the time, because it was before I went to koi.com, I went to a, a breeder and I was buying a bunch of koi and I was picking, I was like, wow, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one. I didn't even know that like, those are the ones that people didn't want. <laughs> I was like, this one's cool. Yeah, hopefully they'll, I'll be sailing around here in a minute. Water temp is a little different and uh, water parameters are pretty close though, so. Let's go see how much water is going through this thing. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. Let's go look at the water coming in and then you can, we can look at the water going Ooh. out. So here we are with the creek that runs down my entire property and uh, here's my trusty poking stick. I leave that right here. So in case it gets too much debris, I can kind of just make sure water keeps going. Now, this is 
very low compared to what it was even two weeks ago. It can be raging through here, but even this is quite a bit of water. It doesn't seem like it, but it's very wide. And as we look at some of the other things, you're gonna see like, wow, that's actually a crazy amount of water. Over here, I'm worried over time, like I don't want it to undermine everything. So, you know, I'm not gonna like change the whole thing, but just go through and look and make sure there's nothing. Like it's starting to erode there. I'm worried that if I don't put something there, like that's just gonna fall in. So I'm like, okay. That's a good spot for some guppies. Yeah, right? <laughs> it, it would grow fish really well, I assume. So then it comes underground here to this pipe. And then I'm definitely, once the water's done coming through, I'm gonna clean this out a bit so we kind of get a better runway. Um, but you know, that's a decent amount of water. That's way more than, you know, some bath bugs, that type of stuff. And if we go to the overflow part, that's when you can really hear and see the flow. So we'll head that way. All right, so we we nearly died there. <laughs> <That was laughs> we almost fell in. <laughs> the camera wasn't on. This moved on us, but this is how much water is overflowing all the time. You see it sticks, and eventually I would get a ladder and like clean it out and make sure you know, everything's going to be good. I want to set up some. I've already bought some pieces to make sure that koi aren't just going to go over. Um, and I want to keep some of this kind of stuff out where it's just all this like cattails and that stuff just ends up over here. But you know that's to me that's quite a bit of water. Like that's that's no joke. You know and that happens 24 hours a day, like not year round, but probably nine or ten months out of the year. And this is like a low point, so it can really gush through here. Um, it's crazy how big it is over there. Yeah. And there's another pipe going through at the bottom, is that? So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah so this that. thing that I haven't ever been able to use yet, we tried. It's, it's got this big old, like you could drain it maybe? Yeah, I've But we couldn't get it to that. move yet. So, um, but it goes through a big pipe on the other end. My plan is to kind of build some different screens and then make it uh, empty out on the land. So if anything ever did get out, it would die, which we don't want anything to die, but we don't want anything to be a problem and further down the road. and. You know, the honest, the real honesty is most, like, contamination in the wild happens from birds. Like, oh, look at that, it's a small koi. Eagle grabs it, drops it in, like, a different part of the water. And then, like, oh, there it goes. So, you know, while this is, like, a sanctuary for koi, in my yard at my other house, it happens the same way. So it's, I'll do everything I can as a hobbyist. And, uh, you know, that's assuming that a mile down the road it's not just like well that's where someone's pouring in like kerosene and oil and you know <laughs> so luckily with the frogs here that's how i was confident that koi would do okay is because frogs are a lot more sensitive typically so that's what i got all right if you want to see where these came from i got an entire video of the pond at your old house yeah and uh, that'll be popping up here soon thanks Corey, for having me it was awesome now it's time to go have a campfire yep <laughs>